Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, Crossing New Frontiers to Conquer Today's Challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, UE St. Augustine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. Back in 1989, I was in the news for experimentally discovering how and why parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. I was in the news for experimentally discovering how and why to use that new supercomputer knowledge to build a new supercomputer that encircled a globe and encircled it in the manner the internet encircled a globe. Since 1989, I'm often asked to explain how parallel processing benefits you. That's like asking, what will the world be like without parallel processing? A world without parallel processing is a world in which 99 of the 100 processors inside your computer is turned off and you are computing at 1% of your computer capacity and perhaps achieving 1% productivity level. Think of Lagos, Nigeria, which is Africa's new biggest city. Lagos, Nigeria has a population of 21 million. For every three persons in Lagos, there are four persons in the West African nation of Ghana. Lagos is 10 times more populous than the South African nation of Botswana. Imagine Lagos, lit by 65,536 street lights. Imagine all the street lights in Lagos turned off. Imagine only one street light in Lagos turned on. Turning off all the street lights in Lagos and turning only one street light on puts Lagos in near total darkness. Imagine a new supercomputer that is a new internet and that is defined by a global network of 65,536 processors. Imagine all the processors within that internet or supercomputer turned off. Imagine only one processor within that internet or supercomputer turned on. Turning only one processor within that supercomputer puts that supercomputer in near total paralysis. A new supercomputer without parallel processing is reduced to the status of an ordinary computer. A new supercomputer that is not parallel processing is like Lagos, Nigeria with only one street light on. In the unknown world of computers, 
the pathfinder explored the world of parallel processing. The discoveries and inventions of the pathfinder charted the course of computing. Yet, that pathfinder was in a blindfolded race, relay race, with fellow blindfolded racers. For me, Philip Emma Aguale, I ran blindfolded across one binary million or 16 times two raised to power 16 email pathways that I visualized as on the 15 dimensional surface of a globe that is embedded into a 16 dimensional universe. I completed that blindfolded race on the 4th of July of 1989, the year that I was in the news for experimentally discovering how and why parallel processing makes the computer faster and makes the supercomputer fastest and how to use that new supercomputer knowledge to build a new supercomputer. The year 1989 was the year we changed the way we thought about the supercomputer. The year 1989 was the year we changed from the traditional vector processing supercomputer to the modern parallel processing supercomputer of today. The scientific discoverer discovered things that pre-existed. The technological inventor invented things that did not previously exist. Parallel processing pre-existed before I experimentally discovered it. But the new parallel processing supercomputer that solves grand challenge problems did not previously exist until I, Philip Emma Aguale, invented it. I experimentally discovered how and why parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. And I experimentally invented how to use that new supercomputer knowledge to build a new supercomputer that encircled a globe and encircled it in the manner the internet encircled a globe. I will take a retrospective look on my quest for the fastest supercomputers during the 16 years onward of June 20, 1974. Back in 1974, I conceived a hyperball internet that communicated across computers and did so via amateur radio. In 1975, I was in the Ham Radio Club in Corvallis, Oregon, United States. Radio communication between computers was my original substitute for email communication between computers. I will look back on how I emailed to and from the 2 to power 16 or 64 binary thousand processors of my parallel processing machine that is de facto a new internet. I experimentally discovered that 64 binary thousand commodity processors that are married together as one cohesive internet and married by one custom interconnect or fast interconnect paths 
that is comprised of one binary million email wires can be harnessed to reduce 65,536 days or 108 years of time to solution on one processor to just one day of time to solution across 65,536 processors that are networked together as a small copy of the internet. I discovered that new internet as an orphan in the world of, vect of the vector processing supercomputer. None of the 25,000 vector processing supercomputer programmers of the 1980s showed the massively parallel processing supercomputer some love. In the 1980s, I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel processing supercomputer ever built. In the 1980s, I discovered the massively parallel supercomputer to be like a book that sat on the library shelf for 180 years and sat without once being checked out. I experimentally discovered how to email codes and data to unique email addresses, each a unique string of 16 zeros and ones. I visualized my email messages as the 16 bit long names of each of my 2 to power 16 codes and as many processors. Synchronized emailing is one of the keys to my experimental discovery that is often remembered as my contribution to the development of faster computers and the fastest supercomputers. Through synchronized emailing, I experimentally discovered that a massively parallel processing supercomputer that is powered by the slowest 2 to power 16 processors that is de facto a small copy of the internet can be harnessed to compute faster than the fastest serial computer or the fastest vector processing supercomputer that experimental discovery is my contribution to the development of massively parallel processing, the technology that drives the fastest supercomputer. Back in the 1970s and 80s, you cannot learn how to use an ensemble of 65,000 536 commodity of the shelf processors and learn how to use them to solve the toughest problems in abstract calculus, like scale algebra or extreme scale computational physics. In the supercomputer textbooks of the 1970s, it was considered impossible to massively parallel process or to harness the total computing power of up to eight processors. In the 1970s, it was believed that parallel processing is a huge waste of everybody's time. I had been programming supercomputers for the 16 years onward of June 20, 1974. On my 16th anniversary of supercomputing, on June 20, 1990, the Wall Street Journal and other U.S. newspapers reported that I had experimentally discovered how to use parallel processing 
to build new supercomputers that perform the world's fastest computations. It should be noted that I experimentally discovered massively parallel processing across a new internet and that I did not learn the technology from a textbook or from a teacher. You don't become an astronaut by reading textbooks on space travels or enrolling in an astronaut academy. You become an astronaut by flying to the moon. Like being an astronaut, you don't become the father of the parallel processing supercomputer by reading a textbook on sequential processing computing. You become the father of the modern supercomputer by being the first and the only person at the father's frontier of massively parallel processing supercomputing. You become the father of the modern supercomputer by being the only full-time programmer of the largest ensemble of commodity off-the-shelf processors that was the precursor to the modern supercomputer. In the 1970s and 80s, I was the lone wolf full-time supercomputer programmer. Back in the early 1980s, I gave my first research scientific lectures on massively parallel processing supercomputers. I gave my lectures as small conversations with African and Caribbean research scientists that I ran into at African nightclubs in Washington, D.C. My widely reprinted lecture that was titled Glo Globalization Not New Look at Slave Trade was given in an African nightclub that was a short walk from Metro Subway Station, Silver Spring, Maryland. Back in 1982, the Kilimanjaro nightclub was the premier African nightclub in Washington, D.C. The Kilimanjaro nightclub was in the Adams Morgan neighborhood of Washington, D.C. Earlier, from 1978 to May 1980, from October 1978 to May 1981, I was living in the Adams Morgan neighborhood and living a short walk to the Kilimanjaro nightclub. I was then living at room 877 of Meridian Hill building that was at the corner of Euclid and 16th Street. From Meridian Hill building, I took the metro bus to the computer center that was in the Foggy Bottom neighborhood of Washington, D.C. My office address was 2101 L Street, Northwest, Suite 805Y, Washington, D.C. A few years later, the Kilimanjaro Club was eclipsed by Zanzibar Club that was in the Foggy Bottom neighborhood of Washington, D.C. Zanzibar Club was a short walk from the computer center and from my office in the foggy bottom neighborhood of Washington, D.C. In Zanzibar Club, the food was good and gentlemen must be dressed in a suit and tie. The clientele of Zanzibar Club include African professionals that were employed at the nearby World Bank and at the also nearby International Monetary Fund. Zanzibar Club had an Afropolitan atmosphere. Zanzibar Club was where Brenda Fassi, the South African anti-apartheid Afropop singer, made her U.S. debut in 2001 and sang passionately in Kosa, 
Zulu and Soto and sang for three hours. In the early 1990s, my friend Joe Shalita, a Tanzanian-born musician, and I frequented Kabuz Music Club in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I first saw King Sonny Ade when he performed for us at the Kabuz Music Club. But my most frequented nightclub of all time was First Avenue in Minneapolis, Minnesota. First Avenue is where the artist formerly known as Prince unveiled Purple Rain. First Avenue is where I first saw African acts like Osita Osadebe, Tabule Rochero, Kanda Bongoman, and Angelic Kijo. Back in April 1990, and in a nightclub, I ran into a Senegalese research computational physicist. He had left Senegal for Paris, France, and came to U.S. after several years in Paris. We were drinking beer at the same table when I discovered his background as a computational physicist. And he discovered my background as the only extreme scale computational physicist that was computing across a new internet that was a global network of 65,536 processors. The Senegalese computational physicist was shocked to learn that a fellow West African research mathematical physicist had experimentally discovered the new supercomputer knowledge of how to build new supercomputers that will be powered by an ensemble of commodity off the shelf processors. He said in amazement, I've heard of parallel processing, but thought it was science fiction. It was surreal to him that he left Dakar, Senegal, West Africa and went to Paris, France to learn computational physics. Here he is in a nightclub in the United States and learning extreme scale computational physics and learning the massively parallel processing supercomputer and learning the technology directly from the primary source and from a person that also grew up in West Africa and learning the technology from the Nigerian that experimentally invented the massively parallel processing supercomputer. The Senegalese research computational physicist described himself as the first student of the first person that experimentally discovered how to make computers faster and how to make supercomputers fastest and how to use that new knowledge to build new supercomputers. We noted that almost three weeks earlier and on February 11, 1990, that Nelson Mandela had walked out of prison. It was 8 p.m. Friday, April 20, 1990. My voice was hoarse from giving my first marathon daily media interviews on my experimental discovery of massively parallel processing. Those daily media interviews continued non-stop and for the past eight weeks and since I won the top prize in supercomputing, I began giving media interviews on my experimental discovery and from the then Cathedral Hill, Hot Hill Hotel in San Francisco, California and on February 28, 1990. My first media interviews 
took place at the International Computer Conference of February 26, 1990 through March 2, 1990. That computer conference was the largest computer conference and was organized by the, society, by the Computer Society of the IEEE, the acronym for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. The experimental discovery of massively parallel processing that I was being interviewed about occurred on the 4th of July of 1989. But to my interviewers, that discovery did not occur a year earlier, but occurred yesterday. Back in 1989, that discovery sounded like science fiction instead of the scientific discovery that it was. So here I was in a nightclub at 8 p.m. Friday, April 20, 1990. I was training my voice to be heard over the loud extended mix and remix of the 1987 dancehall hit song, Yeke Yeke by More Kante, the Guinean vocalist and player of the Kora harp. I continued my geek conversation with the Senegalese computational physicist that was sharing my table. Using the language of a supercomputer scientist, I said to the Senegalese research physicist, quote, I achieved nearest neighbor emailing by using a naming scheme that's binary reflected. It will take a thousand hours to recite the names of all my 65,536 60, 65, commodity processors. Just name eight processors, the Senegalese physicist pleaded. Consider eight processors that are equal distances afar and apart, I said and that are on the surface of a globe that are and that are married together as a global network of eight processors and that define and outline both a new internet and a parallel processing supercomputer computing with eight processing nodes and i continued i visualize my email wires as the 24 bidirectional edges of the cube. And I visualize those eight processors as placed on in the positions of the eight vertices of the cube that I visualized as tightly circumscribed by a globe. For my 65,536 processors, I communicated across higher spatial dimensions and I sent and received emails by visualizing the hypercube in a 16-dimensional universe or hyperspace. I visualized my hypercube as tightly circumscribed by the hypersphere or the hyperglobe and in the same 16-dimensional hyperspace. I rephrased my 16-dimensional email communication problem as follows. How do I walk along the bidirectional email wires and pausing only once at each computer? Doing so is equivalent to my discovering the nearest neighbor mapping of my one-dimensional mesh onto all 65,536 commodity processors that are equal distances afar and apart from each other. That was how I emailed eight petroleum reservoir codes. Each code, an initial boundary value problem that represented eight adjacent production oil fields. It's counterintuitive, but my directly connected petroleum reservoirs 
were mapped onto directly connected commodity processors that simultaneously had different 3-bit long identification numbers that uniquely identified 8 directly connected processors and 8 contiguous blocks of oil fields that were also directly connected. I experimentally discovered how to parallel process across a new internet that is a global network of processors. I experimentally discovered parallel processing in the following eight steps for my eight processors. And I extended that algorithm to my 65,536 steps for my as many processors. First, I synchronously emailed my petroleum reservoir code for all field number zero to the processor I named zero. Second, I synchronously emailed my petroleum reservoir code for all field number one to the processor I named one. Third, I synchronously emailed my petroleum reservoir code for oil field number two to the processor I named three and not email it to the processor I named two. For this processor, my email address was counterintuitive and unconventional. My parallel processing experiment was counterintuitive because I emailed my petroleum reservoir code for oil field number two to processor three within my ensemble of processors. It was intuitive and conventional to email my petroleum reservoir code for oil field number two to processor 2 and to email my code as taught from the supercomputer textbooks of 1989 and earlier. Fourth, I synchronously emailed my petroleum reservoir code for oil field number 3 to the processor I named 2. Here my email addressing is counterintuitive and unconventional because I emailed my petroleum reservoir code for oil field number 3 to processor 2 instead of the intuitive and conventional emailing of computer code 3 to processor 3. Fifth, I synchronously emailed my petroleum reservoir code for oil field number 4 to the processor I named 6. Here, my email addressing is counterintuitive and unconventional because I emailed from computer code 4 to processor 6 instead of the intuitive and conventional emailing of computer code 4 to processor 4. Sixth, I synchronously emailed my petroleum reservoir code for oil field number 5 to the processor I named 7. Here, my email addressing is counterintuitive and unconventional because I emailed computer code 5 to processor 7 instead of the intuitive and conventional emailing from computer code 5 to processor 5. Seventh, I synchronously emailed the petroleum reservoir code for oil field number 6 to the processor I named 5. Here, my email addressing is counterintuitive and unconventional because I emailed my petroleum reservoir simulation code that I named 6 to the processor that I named 5 instead of the counterintuitive and conventional emailing of code 6 to processor 6. 8. I synchronously emailed my petroleum reservoir code for oil field number 7 to the processor that I named 4. 
Here, my email addressing is counterintuitive and unconventional because I emailed the computer code that I named 7 to the processor that I named 4 instead of the intuitive and conventional emailing of code 7 to processor 7. I extended this one-to-one -one mapping algorithm from the third dimension through the sixteenth dimension. In the sixteenth dimension, I synchronously emailed my two raised to power sixteen or sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty six petroleum reservoir simulation codes for sixty four binary thousand oil fields to sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty six processors that I uniquely named by 65,536 unique strings of 16 zeros and ones. In the, in the 16th dimension, my email addressing was counterintuitive and unconventional because I emailed my computer codes to the processors that I named differently instead of the intuitive and conventional emailing of computer codes to processors that were correspondingly named. My code to processor mappings preserved nearest neighbor connectivity and did so with a one-to-one -one correspondence between my 64 binary thousand codes and my as many processors. That one-to-one -one nearest neighbor mapping was at the granite core of how I theoretically and experimentally discovered how and why parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. And for me to experimentally invent how and why to use that new supercomputer knowledge that encircled to build a new supercomputer that encircled a globe and encircled it in the manner the internet encircled a globe. I experimentally discovered the fastest parallel processing supercomputer and I discovered it as a new internet and I discovered it at the crossroad of processor to processor email messaging and I discovered it at the crossroads between nearest neighboring petroleum reservoir simulation codes that I executed within nearest neighboring processors of an ensemble of 65,536 processors that we are the building blocks of a new supercomputer. How to send and receive 65,536 computational physics codes and send and receive them to and from 65,536 processors that define and outline a new internet is a subject that is abstract and impossible to teach. Communicating to and from 65,536 processors that define a small copy of the internet was not in the supercomputer textbooks of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. That new internet was a small copy of a never before understood internet that had only 65,536 processors around a globe instead of billions of computers around a globe. I was dragged into the past by what I invented in the 1980s, namely that parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. Back in the early 1990s, I traveled to American universities to give supercomputer lectures on how I experimentally discovered how to perform the fastest computations 
and perform them by sending and receiving and solving 65,536 extreme scaled computational fluid dynamics codes and data and sending and receiving and solving each computation intensive problem and solving each across 65,536 processors. Back in the 1980s, programming via message passing across a global network of 65,536 processors or across a new internet was a supercomputer feat that other computational physicists didn't dare approach. For that reason, I traveled to American universities and as a visiting distinguished lecturer that was sponsored by the two leading computer societies in the world, namely the Computer Society of the IEEE, that is the largest computer society, and the Association for Computing Machinery, that is the oldest computer society. I was sent to American universities to lecture on my experimental discovery that was in the news in 1989 and on my theoretical discovery of how and why email messages that contain codes and data are sent and received across a new internet that was outlined by 65,536 processors. Back in the 1980s, I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel processing supercomputer ever built and that was powered by 65,536 processors. Back in the 1980s, no academic computer scientist had programmed the most massively parallel processing supercomputer. Therefore, it was impossible to learn how to parallel process the toughest problems in physics and learn the technology in an American or European university. It was impossible in part because the fastest supercomputer in the world cost the budget of a small nation. It was impossible to learn parallel processing from an academic computer scientist who had not and cannot parallel process extreme scale computational physics codes and process them to and from and at each of 65,536 processors that outlined a new internet. Message passing across millions of processors is so fundamental that it is impossible to create the modern supercomputer that computes in parallel without first experimentally discovering and inventing how to pass email messages to its more than 10 million commodity of the shelf processors. A discovery is like a stone thrown into the pool of knowledge. The discovery generates wider ripples each time we throw it into the pool of knowledge or apply it. The discovery in science opened up doors in technology. Parallel processing allows computational tools developed for computational physics to be used in computational medicine and computation or computational mathematics and used to solve the toughest problems that demand the fastest supercomputers. The importance of computational science was underscored in an article that was in the May 8, 1987 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education 
the flagship newspaper that presents news to universities. That article was written by computer and information technology writer Judith Axler Turner. The article was titled, quote, Some hail computational science as biggest advance since Newton Galileo, unquote. My 4th of July of 1989 experimental discovery of how to use massively parallel processing to solve initial boundary value problems of modern calculus and computational physics made the news headlines as the biggest advance in computational science. That experimental discovery that I made across a new internet and made at 10.15 a.m. New York time of the 4th of July of 1989 was a paradigm-shifting discovery that opened the door to the massively parallel processing supercomputer that is the world's fastest computer of today. That invention of the modern supercomputer will never be duplicated or be invented again. That invention is the reason American children are writing school reports on the contributions of Philip M. Aguale to the development of the computer. Each year, the computer gets faster and a new world record in the speed of the computer is set. Yet, the faster computer is powered by essentially the same sequential processing technology that was invented in the 1940s and or is powered by essentially the same vector processing technology that was invented in the 1960s. My world record in the speed of the modern supercomputer that I set on the 4th of July of 1989 that made the news headlines was a first because it opened the door to a new supercomputer that computes in parallel, in parallel rather than computing in sequence. Each forthcoming year, there will be a fastest supercomputer. But there will forever remain the first massively parallel processing supercomputer that is faster than any vector processing supercomputer. My 1989 experimental discovery allowed research computational mathematicians to quickly understand how to use an ensemble of processors to solve the other initial boundary value problems that are merely variations of the initial boundary value problems that I experimentally discovered how to solve. My 4th of July of 1989 experimental discovery of how and why Parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest led to the commercialization of the parallel processing supercomputer. After my 1989 experimental discovery, parallel processing supercomputer went from the outside to the mainstream. After my 1989 experimental discovery, there was an explosion of research and sales and usage of parallel processing computers and supercomputers. I am not the technician that unpacked the crates of the new supercomputer. I am not the technician 
that installed the internal computational components of the new supercomputer. Nor am I the technician that installed the internal networking components of the new supercomputer. And I am not the technician that hooked those components into the cooling and power infrastructures for the new supercomputer. However, I am called the father of the new supercomputer because I experimentally discovered how and why the technology of massively parallel processing makes the new supercomputer fastest. Dalono, Afambo Chukura Philip Emagwale, Abum Oyonicha, Diaga Fumna Emagwale dot com, Commercia, and Philip Emagwale at Emagwale dot com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.